My name is Lisa Bishop, and I serve as the Acting Director of the Office of Grant Administration, or OGA, at CNCS. In CNCS's new structure, OGA is responsible for pro providing the financial grants management guidance to the Office of Regional Operations, as well as our grantees and sponsors. We also have a role with application review and award processing. This session is going to highlight some of the major changes to the uniform guidance that the Office of Management and Budget released in the Federal Register on August 13th, 2020. The uniform guidance was initially published in December 2013, and most elements went into effect in December 2014. The goal of the initial guidance was to combine and streamline a number of OMB circulars, as well as reduce burden for federal grantees. Before we dive into these changes, it is important to know how the Code of Federal Regulations and uniform guidance impacts our work. It is one of the governing authorities that are the key rules and tools that guide federal grants management for all of us. The governing authorities are referenced in CNCS's general terms and conditions, which also outline the order of precedence. We strongly recommend that all grantees review each notice of grant award because they contain critical information, including links to CNCS's general terms and conditions that apply to that grant, as well as the program specific terms and conditions that apply to that grant. And they do change from year to year. The terms and conditions also outline the key governing authority documents and the order in which we apply them if it, to the rules if there are any inconsistencies. These rules range from government-wide to agency-wide to program-specific to grant-wide grant and include the following, all applicable federal statutes, all applicable federal, federal regulations, the notice of grant award and signature page, the applicable CNCS program-specific terms and conditions, CNCS's general terms and conditions for that year, the notice of funding opportunity, and finally, the approved award application, including all assurances, certifications, attachments, and any pre-award negotiations. These changes that OMB published on August 13th support the implementation of the President's Management Agenda, results-oriented accountability for the grants cross-agency priority goal for the federal government, as well as other administration priorities. They also provide additional interpretations on the uniform guidance and support implementation of the Digital Accountability and Transparency Act of 2014, known as the Data Act, and the new Grants Reporting Efficiency and Agreements Transparency Act of 2019, known as the GRADE Act. They also strengthen the government-wide approach to managing risk and performance, reduce misinterpretation and burden to recipients, require federal agencies to adopt standard data elements for the information recipients are required to report to the federal government, and maximize grant funding with a risk-based data-driven framework, balancing compliance and de demonstrative results. There are four main strategies with these changes. They operationalize grants management standards, establish a robust marketplace of modern solutions, manage risk, and finally, achieve program goals and objectives. So there are four parts of 2CFR or the uniform guidance that are uh, most impacted by these changes. Part 25 is a universal identifier and system for award management. Part 170 is reporting sub-award and executive compensation information. Part 183 is never contract with the enemy, which is a brand new section. And then part 200 is the uniform administrative requirements, cost principles, and audit requirements for federal awards. This is where we'll spend the most time today. So, most of the changes go into effect in November, and I'll talk about those in a minute, but there are two changes that were actually effective the date that OMB published on August 13th. The first one is section 200.216, which is the prohibition on certain te telecommunications and video surveillance services or equipment. And this really is about any federal recipients contracting or renewing contracts with a number of covered tele telecommunications equipment or service providers. And that's outlined in more detail in section 200.216. I also wanna to touch on 200.340, which is about termination of federal awards. This increases federal agencies' abilities to terminate awards by not allowing termination, I'm sorry, by now allowing termination if an award no longer effectuates the program goals or agency priorities to the greatest extent allowed by the law. Federal agencies and past through entities must include any provisions for termination in the specific terms and conditions to be able to utilize that, that new flexibility. All right, so the, most of the, the rest of the refinements actually go into effect November 11th of 2020. Uh, this is not an exhaustive list, but they're the ones that are most likely to impact your, your awards from CNCS. So section 200.1 purpose 
expands the definition of fixed awards to include both grants and cooperative agreements. Previously, it was just grants. 200.102 exceptions encourages federal awarding agencies to apply a risk-based data-driven framework to alleviate select compliance requirements for programs that demonstrate results. 200.202 program planning and design highlights the importance of developing a strong plan and design to set the stage for dem demonstrating program results. 200.203 is about notices of funding opportunities and it requires agencies to provide public notice of federal financial assistance programs. 200.205 is about pre-award risk assessment and it, uh, the ability to uh, uh, assess risk at both pre-award and post-award. 200.206 is standard application requirements. It provides uh, more flexibility for federal agencies uh, and it also requires merit proposal, merit review of all discretionary proposals. 200.211 is about public access to federal award information contained in those federal awards. 200.301 performance measures and measurement requires federal awarding agencies to measure recipient performance, encourages agencies to measure recipient performance to improve program goals and objectives, share lessons learned, and spread the adoption of promising practices. And this is also connected to the Evidence-Based uh, Grant Making Act of a couple years ago. 200.344, post closeout adjustments and continuing responsibilities. It supports the timely closeout of awards and improves accuracy of final closeout reporting. It also reduces some of the recipient report burden with closeouts. 200.413 is direct cost. It now explicitly includes evaluation as, a, as an allowable direct cost. And then 200.414 F&A cost. It expands the use of the de minimis rate to entities that have had a federally negotiated indirect cost rate in the past, but do not currently have one. All right, so what is the impact on AmeriCorps state and national grantees? This is a high level overview of how the changes will impact CNCS, uh, ASN applicants and grantees. The changes that are important is the 200.205 um, is merit reviews required of all award processes, uh, are, were, were not required of all award processes, um, but in, previously they were not required for discretionary processes. 200.206 is giving the agency the more flexibility with award risk assessment and it requires review of suspensions and debarments. In the past, it, the, the section, which was previously 205, was much more uh, prescriptive about how federal agencies should, should actually assess risk pre-award. All right, so 200.301 now requires agencies to measure per, uh, recipient performance based on the program objecti objectives. Previously, it was less prescriptive of, of the use of performance measures and objectives. 200.343 supports the timely closeout of awards and improves accuracy of final closeout reporting. Uh, previously, federal agencies had, were required to wait for grantees to complete all of their required closeout actions or close grant awards in non-compliance. 200.414 is around indirect costs. And as I mentioned, uh, now anyone who's, who previously had a federally negotiated rate but does not currently have one may take advantage of the de minimis rate, which is less burden on both grantees and federal agencies. Previously, uh, you weren't allowed to, to take advantage of the de minimis rate if you, if you had ever had a federally negotiated rate. So this is a pretty big change uh, for folks who want to utilize the de minimis rate. And then finally, uh, obviously these are just highlights. We really encourage you to not only review that notice of grant award and all of the documents contained uh, or, or referenced in there, but also these three links. Um, the first two are related to guidance that OMB put out, including the full revisions. There's actually a red line version online you can review. And then the third one is CNCS's resources on the uniform guidance that were originally published in December, 2013. So lots of great resources and information for you. Um, and with that, I'll just say thank you very much.